Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today I'm going to give you a quick look around the Asus Maximus 790 formula. Now because of NDAs there's certain things I'm not allowed to say so I'm just going to say next gen. Uh, yes it is the day before NDA but it's still the day before NDA so I have to be very careful and the reason why I've not done preview sooner is Asus haven't let me. They, uh, they gave me today the 16th or I'm filming this beforehand um, as the day that I was allowed to share content with you. I would have done it sooner if I was allowed. Um, but if I'm completely honest, uh, I've only got watermarked uh, decks at the moment, so I can't show you any graphical stuff. It's very um, frustrating. I also don't have any prices yet either. Again, very frustrating. Um, I don't know why they're being like this because effectively it's stopping me from being able to show this stuff and share it with you and we all want to see it now the formula um it is replacing the old white maximus formula that i have here so thankfully they've kept the formula white for this generation uh last generation the apex was white and it's black this time um but the formula white now there was a problem with the uh, water cooling section on the old one this one is all copper then nickel plated so we shouldn't have any problems at all this time it did make me notice that the EK logo was missing though and it was last time so I don't know quite what's happened now uh, I'm going to show you what comes in the box we'll have a good look around the board one of the things I did like was it comes with like a little membership card um, and it's weird things like it's like a Pokemon card you end up collecting them so uh, Asus if you ask for these boards back don't expect that little card to come back with it um, <laughs> uh, the now I'm gonna be honest about this with the formula last time it came with a white key ring uh, the fact that they've used the same key ring in all of them I'm a little bit miffed by uh, you do get some nice stickers though to put on stuff around your room I, would, I think we should start a thread where we say that anyone that buys one of these, you have to see how many of them and where you can get them on your girlfriend. Probably the quickest way to end up in uh, Singlesville. Uh, now, uh, this I really like, but at the same time, it winds me up because I think they missed a trick because they could have just labelled where things are. So it would have been really easy if we just had red dots for fan headers or yellow dots for RGB and that sort of thing. But they've done it in correlation to the steps, uh, the build steps. Now, uh, this is a quick start guide, but there is no uh, proper manual for like the PCI post to read out or anything like that anymore. And they've gone full digital with it, um, which it sounds like a great idea, but I think because I'm so used to the tactileness of looking through and reading stuff when things are broken, uh, I think I'm going to really miss that. Uh, but only time will tell. Um, it did come with, I've already got it out because I was trying to find out if this image was on it. Uh, and because I plugged it into a different system, I couldn't find it on there. It kept trying to just give me random stuff. But it does come with a uh, driver disc. Although, like I said, I've plugged it into another system and it didn't seem to have a great deal on there. I think it's just because I've got an early version. Um, now, comes with a white uh, Wi-Fi dongle. Now, the Wi-Fi dongle does have these push fit fittings on them now, so you don't have that fiddly little screw, which is kind of nice. It's very nice and magnetic as well. And apparently, there's a PCB in there because I was reading in the, um, the very watermarked uh, press deck. There's a PCB in there because it is Wi-Fi 7. Now the Wi-Fi 7 is 320 megahertz. Wi-Fi 6 was 160 by the way and Wi-Fi 5 was uh, 80 megahertz. Um, so there's a fair bit of extra ability there. Now we'll, we've got some SATA cables which is nice to see because the Encore didn't have them. Uh, then there's a temperature probe and there's an extra um, piece of thermal pad for one of the M.2s and other than a very it does have it I didn't show it but there's a fan mount which goes up here so you can have a fan blowing over your memory now 
fan blowing over your memory. I'm going to say I don't really like them and we haven't needed them for a long time. But they do have this option called Dim Flex. Most current uh, fast memory is Hynix. And effectively, when Hynix warms up, it needs the refresh rates on the memory to what are set in the XMP. But if it is below 60, meg sorry, 60 degrees, for example, you can actually tighten the timings on it and speed it up. And Asus have this feature called Dim Flex, where it will basically, there's a probe on the back of the board for thermals. And if the thermals are, are low enough, then it will uh, tighten the memory timings up and you just have to go into the BIOS to do it. Now this in itself sounds really cool and it's definitely something that I'm going to want to play with <clears throat> when we're allowed to talk about actually testing this stuff and have some uh, pretty quick memory en route from G-Skill and from Patriot. But sadly, neither of them have made it here on time for the previews or the reviews because I've done all my testing now. But I did think this was kind of cool. But that explains why they've put a, a fan thing at the top. Now, I'm going to be honest, I think that if you were to put a 60mm fan on that, it's just going to drive me nuts. Uh, I think you're going to want memory with better heat sinks. I think we're going to see memory coming back with uh, water-cooled modules that we can put on it. And it might actually make sense, other than back in the day when we were running DDR2 at 1.7 volts and it was getting really toasty because of the amount of volts that we were putting into it. But anyway, that is uh, something that we can keep an eye on uh, moving forward. Now, the board itself, I'm going to give you a good look around it. Uh, I'm not going to take the heat sink or anything off yet because I've not tested it. And I don't like to break the seals on anything until I've worked with it and I've done my batch of testing. Now, big, big, God, it does weigh a ton as well. This uh, heat sink at the top will do a just normal air cooling. Uh, but it's obviously it can have water as well. There's little fins inside it. Asus did have a brilliant picture of it in the guide, but it's watermarked with that guy's email. And I just, it's wound me up because I'd really like to share a lot of what was in that guide. Uh, and the, the Asus HQ are just not helping matters with any of us at the moment. I do have this magical little tool because I'm technically not allowed to power it up for you, but I do have my magical USB charger thingy-me-bobber so you can see the rather subtle ROG logo on this. Now I like this compared to the old one because the old one had kind of a dot matrix kind of affair going on with it. Now they do look very similar otherwise but this is definitely a nice upgrade. We're breaking into a review and I want to save that for when I actually do do the review but it does show you the uh, two inch live dash OLED. Now you can put your own stuff on this. You can have it running, uh, showing you temperatures from your system or all sorts of stuff. But it's a nice little OLED in there. And underneath that is your PCI Express 5 uh, M.2 slot as well. There's another four underneath this large section here. I don't need to take it off for you, but two of them are for double sided M.2s. Two of them, no, sorry, three of them are double sided. One of them is not, uh, and double-sided means that there's uh, another bit of thermal paste that's kind of on the board with the heatsink area there as well. Now, if I pull this off, we can get back to having a look around. It's actually really heavy. Um, there's a lot on this board. Now, you've got your two eight pins at the top here, and they're all solid pins as well. Solid pins on the 24 pin here as well. Now, you've got four fan headers up here, so you have CPU fan, CPU optional, then you've got AIO pump, and then you've got chassis fan one, your Q code readout, then you've got start, retry, flex key, and the first um, RGB header. These two are kind of linked because the uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2, so it's your C's on the front panel. Um, if you want to use these for charging, they will charge up to 60 watts but you do need to plug this in for it so it's got an 8 pin PCI Express for this it will technically add some extra power into the PCI Express on the board but it's not going to increase um, benchmarks or anything like that unless you're overclocking the nuts out of it and to be fair you are going to be needing to volt mod and all kinds of things for this to ever make sense 
for a normal user. So for us normal people, and I consider myself one of those, the only time that you're going to need this 8-pin is when you want 60 watts worth of fast charging on this. Then you've got more USB 3, then four SATAs, and then you've got a water coolant area down on the bottom here. This board is so heavy, it's actually hurting my shoulder. Wow, okay, so water cooling area down here. Another USB 3, two USB 2s, three more fan headers, and then three RGB headers. You've got th three in total addressables, but only a single uh, four pin normal one there. And then I'm gonna put it down to look around the back. Oh, I say look around the back. It does have a full Ouch. It does have a full back plate on it. Now, round the back, it does have, these are the quick release uh, Wi-Fi 7 headers here. Now, these two are Thunderbolts, and it's Thunderbolt 4 as well, just for those of you out there that get excited about it. Um, now, you've got a 5G USB there, 10G USB there and there. And then you've also got another 10G USB here. These are obviously Thunderbolt ports and 5G Ethernet. Um, on the old formula, this was 10G. So this is a quiet step back. Now, um, the Dark Hero is only 2.5. So this is a step up. Um, but it, it does make me wish because I, I like networking. Now, for most gamers, this isn't going to matter because if you're if you don't have like a network with a server and stuff at home or a NAS, then it's not going to matter. But it does matter to me, so this is a downgrade for me, um, which is quite sad. But uh, you do get an onboard HDMI. Just please remember, um, and you'll be amazed how many people still do it. If you have a dedicated graphics card, you need to plug into the dedicated graphics card. This is only for the onboard video if your CPU supports it. Now, uh, a very sexy uh, looking board. I'm a big fan of the uh, Asus white stuff. I have been back since the days we used to call the whiteboards deluxes. Uh, so when I see stuff like this, this does make me excited. But at the same time, I'm apprehensive because I really liked the old board and they've mixed things up a little bit on this one. Hopefully we don't have any water cooling problems, but that's only going to come with time and new end users, but I don't think they're gonna let something like that happen again. Although they do say that um, not many people have been affected because most people don't even use the water cooling side of it. But anyway, very, very pretty board. Please check back for the main review. Please go and have a look at the uh, channel because we have other previews up there. Probably by the time you see this, there are gonna be reviews up there as well. And we also have a brand new website. Your phone is going to love it. Hopefully you love it as well. Please let me know in the comments underneath. But for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another preview for you. Out.